This expert hematopathologist video tutorial is presented by Dr. Jeffrey Voss, who is Professor of Pathology and Hematopathology Fellowship Director at West Virginia University. Dr. Voss is a recipient of multiple teaching awards and has particular interest and expertise in spleen pathology. In the next few minutes, I would like to uh, briefly go over a case of autoimmune splenitis as a way to uh, introduce my approach to non-neoplastic splenic lesions. And with any organ system, the, you know, the first order of business is to exclude the possibility of a neoplastic process. And in order to do that in the spleen, of course, you need to understand the anatomy uh, well enough to know when it's either uh, effaced or, or sufficiently preserved. And so the main components of the spleen uh, would be the capsule, as you see here, very thin with a paucity of inflammatory cells typically. Uh, there is the, the red pulp, which is the filtration system of the spleen, uh, where the sheathed capillaries essentially dump blood into the cords of the spleen, which then filter their way through and then become collected in the venous sinusoids. And finally, there's the uh, white pulp of the spleen, uh, which for the most part stays in the vicinity of blood vessels, either uh, forming follicles like you see here beginning to form at branched arteries and those would be mostly B cells and then in other areas where they form more longitudinal sort of conical shaped um, sheaths of lymphocytes uh, known as PALs which are composed mostly of uh, T cells uh, and then along with the white pulp uh, of course there are the blood vessels themselves can show abnormalities so that's the first step just to show whether or not architecture is preserved uh, to kind of go down uh, a non-neoplastic route. And then if there is an abnormality, to know which compartment is mostly uh, affected so that you can formulate a differential diagnosis and uh, uh, you know, direct your attention and work up toward uh, one of these uh, lesions. So some of the things, a helpful uh, way to help uh, you decide whether or not the architecture is maintained in the spleen is to do just a few stains. For instance, here's a, an example of a CD3 immunohistochemical stain highlighting the T cells, which as I showed you in the previous slide, uh, tend to hug and, and stay in close proximity to uh, the blood vessels. So this is just highlighting the, uh, the PALs, uh, which if you did more stains to subtype these would be predominantly CD4 positive T cells. Furthermore, uh, you could do a CD20 IHC stain to highlight the B-cell nodule components of the uh, white pulp, as you see in this uh, slide now, um, showing the B-cell aggregates that typically, as I said, occur at the branch points of the arterioles. And the combination of these two stains, CD3 and CD20, then are a good example of just showing how uh, the white pulp is supposed to sort of respect its compartment and not randomly set up small, no see small nodules kind of uh, dispersed throughout the red pulp, so everything kind of is keeping uh, in its uh, respective space this way. So now moving on to our case of uh, autoimmune splenitis. This is in a 44-year-old male who had a history of rheumatoid arthritis and ITP and now presents uh, with pancytopenia. Uh, grossly, the, the spleen uh, was not enlarged. It was, uh, the weight was within normal limits but the capsule showed uh, white uh, nodularity to it where you see a, a section of it right here. And if you go uh, next to that area of uh, fibrosis, you can uh, notice what more or less the normal splenic capsule should look like. It's relatively thin and so on. Uh, but moving over toward this uh, nodular area, you see very thickened uh, collagenous layers uh, and this is believed to uh, be secondary to the repeated inflammatory insults that happen to the splenic capsule resulting in this kind of uh, scar-like formation. So this is often referred to as hyaline perisplenitis or uh, sugar icing it's sometimes referred to as well. And then moving on to uh, another section here uh, that better displays uh, the other abnormalities in this particular spleen. You see what grabs your eye right away are the, uh, these collagenous nodules which are situated within the white pulp. The white pulp itself, the lymphoid tissue, is mildly expanded as well, but the prominent feature here, as you see, are these uh, very uh, 
thickened blood vessels. In the center of the nodule here, you see the remnant arteriole, and then these kind of concentric layers of collagen that are ringing it, uh, forming this kind of nodule and sort of uh, replacing the white pulp in a sense. In other areas, you'll see that the uh, same process is happening, but maybe is a, not quite as old in the sense that uh, there's still an inflammatory infiltrate being trapped within these layers of collagen or fibrous tissue, resulting in this onion skinning appearance, uh, somewhat reminiscent of what you'd think of in Castleman's disease. So you see kind of two different age lesions here where uh, you have this uh, kind of onion skinning and then eventually developing this uh, scar-like uh, collagenous nodules uh, around the, uh, the vessels. Uh, other than that, you see the white pulp, is, as I mentioned, is slightly expanded. Um, there are areas, uh, for instance, right here you see an example of a hyperplastic uh, follicle, a germinal center surrounded by the mantle and marginal zones. Uh, as you'd see in any other example of uh, splenic white pulp hyperplasia. And then finally, uh, it's notable that the red pulp in between is relatively unremarkable, which is typically the case in autoimmune disorders of the spleen, where uh, this particular uh, section is fairly well preserved where you see open sinusoids and then the intervening uh, cords that are uh, filled with macrophages. In some situations though, I will mention that uh, since the spleen is so highly vulnerable to uh, autolysis, it may be necessary to do a stain such as PAS or reticulin uh, to help highlight that hoop-like uh, meshwork that you uh, are familiar with uh, in the red pulp of the spleen. So again, that might be another uh, kind of ancillary test you can do to help uh, confirm in your mind that there isn't any architectural effacement in this case. But so in total, you see the, uh, the findings of this case of autoimmune splenitis are that of a mainly a white pulp problem where uh, the abnormality is uh, a range of, of a kind of a fibroinflammatory nodules centered around blood vessels uh, along with uh, white pulp hyperplasia. And that, that's that in conjunction with the perisplenitis I showed you in the other slide um, are, are a pretty good example of somebody um, who's had sort of long-standing rheumatoid arthritis affecting the spleen. Just to show you another example of autoimmune splenitis, this is a 36-year-old woman who presented with massive splenomegaly and spontaneous rupture. A section of her spleen shows a pretty prominent uh, white pulp hyperplasia. Um, you can see, for instance, in this follicle here, there's a very well-formed germinal center and expanded but well-circumscribed mantle and martial zones surrounding the germinal center. And so this case, you see very florid reactive follicular hyperplasia of the spleen. And in this situation, uh, really the uh, idea would be to try to exclude the possibility of lymphoma here. So this would be a case where you definitely would want to uh, work up a little bit to exclude the possibility of, say, for instance, splenic martyrs and lymphoma. So just in contrast to the, the previous case, this is a, you know, an earlier version of autoimmune splenitis, whereby the white pulp is very hyperplastic and the sclerotic uh, vascular findings are, are pretty minimal. But in time, they would eventually uh, become uh, more uh, kind of fibrotic looking and that uh, inflammatory component would become less and less. Uh, as a final uh, feature that I'd just like to mention but wasn't present in either of the cases of autoimmune splenitis that I've shown you today is um, in the white pulp, sometimes you see uh, evidence of uh, necrosis that has sort of prominent apoptotic debris associated with it. So for all the world, it looks like a case of Kaguchi Fujimoto disease. So just keep that in mind as well, that that may uh, be a finding in uh, in the white pulp component uh, of, this, of spleens affected by uh, diseases, especially lupus and in some cases, rheumatoid arthritis. So in summary, my approach to uh, evaluate non-neoplastic splenic lesions is to systematically assess uh, for effacement, first of all, and then, then go through each compartment of the spleen, namely the capsule, white pulp, red pulp, and blood vessels, to look for where the abnormality lies. And then based on that, sort of cross-referencing my differential diagnosis with the clinical history and serologic studies to arrive at a diagnosis.
And keep in mind that patients with autoimmune disease are inherently immune compromised and often on medications that contribute to their state so that it wouldn't be unusual to find infection or hematopoietic malignancy in spleens uh, of patients with autoimmune disorders. So all of those things are in the differential diagnosis uh, so that um, you, can, you, you would obviously need to look for those in addition to trying to find uh, the, the changes of autoimmune splenitis in the background as sort of the uh, evidence of what the underlying disorder may be contributing to the patient's condition. Thank you, Dr. Voss, for contributing to the Expert Hematopathologist video tutorial series from the Society for Hematopathology.